hello friends so i'll be talking on this uh, topic very briefly uh, renal ultrasound uh, with relevance to renal resistive index so I wish to acknowledge uh, my colleague dr sudhakar who helped me develop this content so this is also an ultrasound series so this is a useful tool where we will focus on certain indices to look at mainly the renal resistive index as a indicator of someone who is at risk for acute kidney injury and whether acute kidney injury would be persistent or is it a transient so it may be a useful tool uh, so it's good for intensivists to know briefly about the uh, renal ultrasound so for when we have to uh, interpret the image of the renal ultrasound it's good to know the cross sectional sort of a image of uh, kidney and how it looks in ultrasound so when you look at the cross section of the kidney so you have a cortex here uh, because this you would be wanting to see in an ultrasound how the cortex looks. Uh, then with regards to renal resistive index, if you see the vexus, we looked at the interlobular veins as one of the uh, area which we insulate. So here we looked at uh, arcuate arteries and interlobular arteries. Uh, so for renal resistive index, we look at arcuate arteries and interlobular arteries and we insulate these. Then medulla, this is the medulla in the cross-sectional of the kidney and this is the papilla. And then you have this major calyx here. And uh, so when you look at uh, the kidney ultrasound, it looks like this. I will take you through how each area looks in the renal ultrasound. So, but one needs to understand this is how the cross-sectional image of the kidney looks and how we find it in ultrasound will go step by step. So if you look at the vascular supply of the kidney, so as you see, you have these interlobular arteries uh, and the arcuate arteries. So for us to determine the uh, renal resistive index, we need to insinuate either the arcuate arteries or the interlobular arteries. So, and they look something like this. So when you put an ultrasound, it has some sort of a speckled appearance and we need to insinuate on these uh, interlobular or arcuate arteries. And this is the pictorial representation of how the blood supply of the kidney looks on the cross section. So when we are doing a renal ultrasound, so this is how the kidney would look. So this is the size of the kidney. We take the longitudinal sort of a measurement and look at the size of the kidney. And uh, this would be the renal sinus uh, echogenicity. And this is the cortical thickness and echogenicity. So these are the things that we interpret in the renal ultrasound. We look at the size, we look at the sinus echogenicity, we look at the cortical thickness, and we look at the cortical echogenicity. And then we look at the perfusion. So these are the uh, sort of four to five aspects that we would look when we are doing renal ultrasound. We look at the size first, we look at the sinus echogenicity, we look at the cortical thickness echogenicity and perfusion. So I'll take you through uh, each of these as to how we look at. So when you look at the kidney size, we look at the longitudinal sort of a size when we measure the kidney size. The normal size is around 10 to 12, 12 centimeters. So if the kidney size is less than 8 centimeters, it is considered as a small kidney or contracted kidney. So this is the first thing. So we look at the renal size. Then we look at the cortical thickness. So if you re recall the cross-sectional image of the kidney. So the cortical thickness is measured from the outer border of medulla. So if you look at this white uh, aspect of the kidney, which ends, that is the medulla. So you take from there to the uh, to the periphery and that gives the cortical thickness. So one has to be careful when you're measuring cortical thickness. It has to be taken from the edges of this papilla until to the circumference, which is the cortical thickness. So the normal cortical thickness is 9.3 to 1.1 millimeter. So that is about the cortical thickness. So first thing is we look at the size in the longitudinal uh, sort of a dimension. Cortical thickness we take from the outer border of the medulla to the periphery and the normal is 9.3. Then we look at the cortical echogenicity. So the cortical echogenicity should be less than liver. If it is more than liver, it is considered as abnormal. And uh, if you look at this, the renal sinus, so this white thing, what you see in the middle is the renal sinus. It looks as a brightly echogenic fat. So this is the renal sinus. So the white thing you see is the renal sinus. And if it is less echogenic, it means the patient is developed hydronephrosis or there is an impending hydronephrosis that is setting in. So this is a, a bright structure. What you see in the kidney is the renal sinus. And the black structures that sort of uh, project out 
from the renal sinus are the medullary pyramids and from the edge of this medullary pyramids to the periphery is the particle thickness you measure so this is what one needs to be clear when you are measuring kidney so that is about the morphology so whenever as an intensivist you look at the kidney maybe it is easier for you to look at the size it's very easy then cortical thickness from the edge of the medullary pyramids to the circumference and then you look at the renal sinus echogenicity because if the renal sinus echogenicity is lost uh, then there is an impending hydronephrosis so but the, but the today's uh, whole point of uh, uh, emphasis is on renal perfusion so for that we look at renal resistive index so the whole advantage of renal resistive index is to determine the patients who are at risk for acute kidney injury and also to determine whether the acute kidney injury is transient or it is persistent and it looks at the renal perfusion so these are the three aspects uh, which can be determined by measuring the renal resistive index so for measuring renal resistive index or renal ultrasound i think we had uh, gone through this in detail in rexus video so we we'll, uh, lie the patient down and we uh, we put the ultrasound probe which is a curvilinear 2 to 5 uh, megahertz uh, frequency probe we put at the posterior axillary line to get a good renal ultrasound image and then you put a pulse wave doppler so when you put a pulse wave doppler it looks like a speckled appearance like this so all the red ones are either interlobular arteries or arcuate arteries so they would be seen like this so you need to insinuate on one of the red aspect which is because the the blue ones will all be the v veins so the arcuate artery or interlobular artery you have to insinuate one of the red area that you see in a speckled appearance and you get an arterial and venous waveform the key aspect of doing this renal resistive index is the settings so this is what uh, i want intensivists to bear in mind so so this is a little caveat you have in ultrasound unlike the vexus where you don't need to do any adjustment here there has to be some tweaking of the settings that you need to do in any ultrasound machine use there is something called wall filter so the wall filter should be kept as low as possible when you are doing this renal resistive index the reason is because the renal perfusion has a low flow velocities because it has a low flow velocities and you need to pick up the low flow velocities the wall filter has to be kept as low as possible then there is this pulse frequency you will see in ultrasound in our ultrasound machine where we use philips one it is called as repetitive pulse frequency it has to be kept lowest possible 1.2 to 1.4 kilohertz and the gain has to be kept highest uh, so that we eliminate the background noise and once you insinuate either the arcuate artery or interlobular arteries one needs to measure the peak systolic velocity and diastolic velocity and for all our friends uh, this we don't need to measure manually as soon as you put a pulse wave doppler on the arcuate or interlobular arteries and put a pulse wave form so you will get the waveform and once you put your cursor uh, once you put your uh, measurement re, uh, resistive index is automatically calculated by the uh, machine and it will give you and i'll show you the video demonstration uh, as to how we, we do it in our unit so relative resistive index is peak systolic velocity minus end diastolic velocity divided by peak systolic velocity and the, and once you do an ultrasound once you insinuate and put the pulse wave automatically your ultrasound machine will take the peak systolic and diastolic and it will give you the uh, resistive index as you see here resistive index is 0.58 so the reference for all the intensivists to remember is if the renal resistive index should be less than 0.7 so if it is more than 0.74 then it indicates that the patient is at a 3.3 times risk of developing acute kidney injury at day 5 and if renal resistive index is more than 0.8 it means patient may develop persistent aki and if renal resistive index is point, less than 0.71 there is a risk of possible transient aki but it could improve so ideally it should have less than 0.7 or lesser the rri better so once it goes more than 7 it indicates that patients are at a risk of aki so you have to remember 74.74 .74 and 8 to indicate whether they will develop persistent aki or uh they are at a risk of developing aki uh, on day five and there are few studies to validate this so i'll just show you this ultrasound uh, what we do in our unit so this is a ultrasound which we have done as you see 
you have to do the measurement of wall filter here. So here you see, this is the filter. You see here, down filter is there. You can see the filter here. So that filter, we have to keep it. As I said, wall filter has to be kept as low as possible uh, to pick up this low flow velocities. And here you see the frequency, which I said frequency should be kept low. Uh, so we keep it at one or as low as possible. Here we have kept it as adaptive frequency. So this is just to show how the settings look in ultrasound. And once you put the pulse wave, you will see this speckled appearance and all the red ones are interlobular or arcuate arteries. I'll just show you the... So you can see this video. So we have put the filter at uh, the wall filter as low as possible, one. And then we reduce the frequency also here. You see here. So if you have kept as frequency and then adaptive mode, which is, which is adapted to the uh, image that is captured. Uh, so this is how we do in our ultrasound machine. I'm sure most ultrasound machines would have this wall filter and frequency, which you need to adjust. So keep the filter as low as possible and keep the frequency low. So, and once you do that, so this is how you would get a waveform here. Uh, once you insinuate and put a pulse wave Doppler, you have a systolic. And as you see here, automatically it captures the systolic and diastolic and it gives you a resistant index. So, so you would see that. So this is being measured. So you get the resistive index here. The blue one you see here, you are getting the resistive index. So for the patient we did who had AKI, as you see, the resistive index was found to be little high. So it was 0 0.7, 0 0.75. So which means to say that this patient was at a risk of developing AKI. And this, this particular uh, renal ultrasound we did in a patient who had developed AKI. And so we could see the renal resistive index was more than 0.74. Uh, which tells us that she is at a risk of AKI, but it was not more than 0.8, which possibly tells us that she would not develop uh, persistent AKI. So this is what uh, one could do. So what are the advantage of renal resistive index? So it is an easy tool. You will very easily capture a renal ultrasound. And uh, the key thing is to keep the wall filter, because if you do not keep the wall filter low or and the frequency low, then it, you wouldn't capture that nice interlobular artery or interlobular vein and the signals will be very weak. So for that to be picked up, this is the only setting. Once you do this setting, the image comes pretty uh, pretty good and you can insinuate. So the advantage is uh, it's a rapid way of ascertaining the patients who are at a risk of AKI. It is non-invasive and it is repeatable. So there are certain confounders, age and the mean arterial pressure if patient is hypotensive, so that may act as a confounder or someone who has a high intra-abdominal pressure or someone who is in AF or tachycardia or this can be some of the confounders. So the limitations is how well this is validated, saying that 0.74, they are at a 3.3 times at a risk of developing AKI at day 5 or more than 0.8 that they develop persistent AKI. So there are very few studies. So there are no uh, sort of a robust, large, powered, good, uh, good powered studies to tell us that this can be used as a sort of a, um, a definitive tool. So this can be used as an adjunct. So it is good for every intensivist to know about this. So any renal ultrasound for intensivist, so you can very easily, you can measure the size. You can look at the cortical thickness. You can look at the renal sinus echogenicity because that will tell you whether patient is developing hydronephrosis. It has to look like a white thing. If that is not happening, then patient is at a risk of uh, echogenicity. And then you can do this renal resistive index in all in one single setting. All this can be done. So that's about it. So you can visit my website www.drpradeepankapur.com to rehear to this in ultrasound series. So thank you one and all. So I end with this beautiful quote: so "Secret of energy." is to focus on what is this? the secret of sorry <laughs> secret of change is to focus all of your energy not on fighting the old but on building the new thank you one and all what is that